Welcome to the Medwire News Podcast. In the second of this two-part edition focusing on the SGLT2 inhibitors, John Wilding from the University of Liverpool rounds up what we've so far learned from the clinical trials about the benefits and drawbacks of these medications for patients with diabetes. John, can you tell me about your involvement with the SGLT2 inhibitor trials? I've been involved in the development of SGLT2 inhibitors since relatively early days where I was involved in uh, two trials with uh, dapagliflozin where it was added to insulin in a triple therapy trial with uh, dapagliflozin and as an investigator for both CANVAS and CANVAS-R cardiovascular outcome trials with canagliflozin uh, and I'm on the uh, trial steering committee uh, for the uh, DECLARE trial with uh, dapagliflozin. So SGLT2 inhibitors have a mechanism that's quite different from anything else currently available. What treatment need does this fill and how does it complement existing medication classes? The way that SGLT2 inhibitors work is by blocking the uh, reabsorption of glucose from the proximal tubule of the kidney, which is mostly uh, carried out by this uh, sodium-dependent glucose transporter called sodium glucose transporter 2. The rest is mopped up by uh, uh, another transporter called SGLT1. Uh, And and this has a a number of of consequences. The additional amount of glucose that is lost in the urine is around about 75 grams a day, uh, which obviously directly reduces the blood glucose. So unlike most other glucose-lowering drugs that either work by improving insulin resistance or by stimulating insulin secretion, uh, this uh, drug work, this class of drugs works completely independently of uh, the prevailing insulin levels. And so it can be used used effectively across all stages of of, of diabetes, which is one clinical advantage of of this group of drugs, whereas uh, some of the other agents that, for example, stimulate insulin secretion don't work so well if the insulin uh, reserve is is reduced as it is late in the disease. Uh, The other uh, obvious advantage from that is if you're losing 75 grams of glucose in the urine, you're also losing about 300 calories in the urine. And we know that people with diabetes uh, to a great extent have obesity or overweight uh, and that weight loss is a very important part of uh, our therapeutic approach to treating people with diabetes, usually with diet alone. Uh, which is not always successful. So a drug that actually helps people lose weight by removing some of the calories that they've consumed directly in the urine uh, can be very helpful. And in general, with this group of drugs, uh, we see about two to three kilograms of additional weight loss uh, when patients are are taking the medicine. Now, that's not a huge amount, but for a lot of our patients with diabetes, that's a a very positive thing, and many of them have not lost weight for, for many years. Um, The third uh, advantage uh, over and above glucose lowering and weight loss is that because this is a uh, sodium-dependent glucose transporter, uh, there is also a modest degree of uh, sodium loss and a small amount of volume depletion, which results in a lowering of blood pressure. And given that about 80% of people with type 2 diabetes uh, have hypertension, uh, any drug that helps lower their blood pressure, which these drugs do by about three or four millimeters of mercury systolic, uh, is likely to be uh, advantageous uh, for, those, for those patients. Of course, there is a, a small risk if you, if, in some people, they may get uh, uh, too low a blood pressure or postural hypotension, and that's one of the adverse effects that we have to watch out for. But in practice, uh, that's actually quite rare. And how are SGLT2 inhibitors thought to influence patients' cardiovascular risk? The SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, as with all glucose-lowering drugs, have to be tested uh, for cardiovascular uh, safety. And as a result of that, all of the major drugs in the class, which are empagliflozin, canagliflozin, and dapagliflozin, have uh, had a cardiovascular outcome trial. Uh, and two of those trials have have already reported. The other one uh, is not yet reported. Uh, And the first two trials, the EMPA-REG outcome trial with empagliflozin and the CANVAS trial series with canagliflozin, which I was involved in as as an investigator, uh, both showed uh, a reduction particularly in cardiovascular death, but also in uh, particularly hospitalization for heart failure 
Uh, and, and this has been uh, something that's been of, of great interest to the, to the diabetes community because these drugs uh, actually seem to not just be safe from a cardiovascular perspective, but actually appear to reduce uh, certain types of, of cardiovascular risk. Uh, now, the mechanisms for this are not fully understood. Uh, obviously, there are some benefits from weight loss and glucose lowering and blood pressure reduction that may contribute, but it does appear that there may be independent effects. Now, of course, the uh, volume depletion as a result of, uh, of, of the diuretic effect uh, that I've already described may well contribute to the reduction in heart failure events, and, and it's important that these uh, drugs are relatively weak diuretics and they don't alter potassium in either direction which may uh, be an advantage. Uh, there are some other interesting theories, uh, it, for example, that these drugs do increase uh, very modestly but nevertheless uh, quite measurably ketone production and ketones, uh, obviously bad news if you develop ketoacidosis, but in, in general terms they, they are uh, quite a useful fuel for the heart, particularly when it's uh, ischemic and this may therefore uh, be one mechanism potential mechanism by which these uh, drugs are cardioprotective uh, the the reality is that it's probably multifactorial it's not almost certainly by reducing atherosclerosis which is how for example statins help reduce cardiovascular disease it seems to be much more likely to be a hemodynamic effect or a, or a metabolic effect or a combination of those, of those two things but nevertheless these are very exciting results and what about their effect on the kidneys one of the original concerns about this group of drugs, uh, the SGLT2 inhibitors, was that they might actually damage the kidneys because it was felt that the rapid reabsorption of glucose might cause problems in the kidneys. In fact, it turns out that completely the opposite is true. Uh, we do see uh, when patients first start these drugs a modest 2 to 3 mils per minute fall in the glomerular filtration rate, which probably occurs because of hemodynamic effects within the kidney, uh, resulting in, in a small fall in EGFR at the glomerulus. But in the long term, uh, what was seen in the EMPA-REG outcome trial and also to some extent in the CANVAS trial is an improvement in renal function, or at least a, a slowing of the decline of renal function. And this effect seems to be complementary, although in some ways similar to what is seen with ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, in that we see a reduction in albuminuria, uh, a reduction in glomerular hyperfiltration, and ultimately preservation of uh, GFR over, if, when you follow patients for a longer period of time. What trials are coming up that will add to our knowledge? The large outcome trial that is yet to report is the DECLARE uh, trial, which has recruited 17,000 patients, uh, and this will include both patients who have previously had a cardiovascular event, who were the sort of patients that were also included in EMPA-REG and the CANVAS trial series, but also a very significant number of patients who have risk factors for cardiovascular disease but have not yet had an event. And one of the important uh, things that we still need to answer about SGLT2 inhibitors is it's very clear that the benefits in those patients with established cardiovascular disease are very clear, but I think it's going to be important to see whether those benefits extend to those patients who have not yet had a cardiovascular event. Now, there is a hint that that uh, will also be positive uh, from data from a, an observational study called CVD Real uh, that has looked at uh, particularly hospitalization for heart failure uh, in a, a, and cardiovascular death in a very large group of, of people who prescribed SGLT2 inhibitors in, in real-world clinical practice. And that appears to, uh, or that shows, uh, very similar results to what we've seen in the EMPA-REG outcomes with a reduction in heart failure hospitalization and a reduction in cardiovascular death, which is uh, getting on for a 30 to 40 percent uh, reduction uh, in 150,000 patients treated with SGLT2 inhibitors compared to patients treated with, treated with other glucose lowering drugs across six different countries. So I think that that uh, and there will be more results to come from from those types of observational real world data that will complement uh, what we 
have seen from the clinical trials. And I think in, in the fullness of time, we'll extend uh, the, these benefits beyond uh, those high-risk patients that were included in Empereg and Canvas uh, to uh, a wider group of pa- people with, with type 2 diabetes. What's your thoughts on the potential amputation risk with SGLT2 inhibition? I think we have to always, uh, when we're using uh, medicines, uh, balance the risks and the benefits uh, that, that are seen with those drugs. Now, uh, the, the benefits for the SGLT2 inhibitors seem to be quite clear, uh, but in, in one series of trials, the Canvas series of trials, there was a significant increase in uh, amputations in patients treated with the SGLT2 inhibitors compared to the uh, comparator uh, or control group. Uh, Now, the reasons for that are are unclear, and it's interesting that this hasn't been seen with with other drugs in the class. I think we need to uh, uh, continue to be cautious, and certainly I would be cautious about using uh, these drugs in patients with uh, established peripheral vascular disease, who were the group of patients who were most likely to to have an amputation in the CANVAS trials. Uh, And I think that is is one limitation at the moment. Uh, But I would expect that we will, over time, see see more data and perhaps understand a little bit more about this, uh, both from the CREDENCE trial with canagliflozin, uh, from observational data, uh, which is yet to be collected, but there would be no reason not to be able to look at this, for example, in the CVD real cohort, and also from the ongoing trials uh, such as uh, the DECLARE uh, trial, uh, and there's also a trial with uh, another SGLT2 inhibitor that's not yet available, so to glyphlozin, uh, that will also report in, in due course. So for the time being until these new results become available what do you think is the take-home message for doctors using his drugs in a clinic i think the key take-home messages are that uh, the sglt2 inhibitors are a very useful addition to our uh, therapeutic uh, choice for people with type 2 diabetes Uh, they're clearly not for for everyone Uh, for example we know that they're not likely to be effective in patients who already have uh, significantly impaired renal function uh, and, uh, and that some patients find it difficult to take them because of recurrent uh, genital fungal infections. Uh, and I would also be very cautious in patients with known peripheral vascular disease. But in people who've perhaps previously had a heart attack or have a history of heart failure, uh, I think these are uh, there is very clear evidence of, of benefit, and for a lot of the other patients, the the option of a diabetes drug that helps them uh, in terms of blood pressure, uh, blood pressure, blood glucose, and weight lowering is is very significant and very worthwhile. Uh, and so I think we will see them used more in clinical practice, but with uh, you know certain cautions and precautions for those groups of people where there have been. Uh, albeit rare, problems identified. And that would also include, of course, people with type 1 diabetes or with late-onset autoimmune diabetes who might be at risk of of ketoacidosis, which is also a rare but recognized adverse effect of this group of drugs. So, with thanks to John Wilding, that concludes our look at the SGLT2 inhibitors, but do visit our website for more news, research and review articles and expert opinion across the spectrum of diabetes care.